As the minister mentioned, we now have the pleasure to invite to the stage two people who will present the amazing Athens smartphone application. This is Professor Andrei Gerolimatos, the director at the Stavros Niarchos Foundation Center for Hellenic Studies at Simon Fraser University, and Kosta de Tejikas, technology manager at the Stavros Niarchos Foundation New Media Lab at Simon Fraser University. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I would like to thank the Stavros Niarchos Foundation for several things. Um, for one thing, we are the beneficiaries of philanthropy. Our center came into existence because of a significant grant from the foundation, which created the Stavros Foundation Center for Hellenic Studies at Simon Fraser University, which in turn was matched by the university, and is one of the largest uh, centers in the world that deals with Greek studies. We have an academic program, we have a center, and of course we have what we call the SNF New Media Lab. And this new media lab has given us the opportunity to give back, not just to the foundation, but to give back to the Greek people and the Greek state. And one way we know how to do it from so far away. I mean, Vancouver is dramatically further than, than Athens. As a matter of fact, it's raining and cold in Vancouver as we speak, quite different from what it is here. Our goal was made known to us when we met with uh, Minister Kefalogiani, who's a very dynamic minister, and she's one of the new people in government who are doing amazing things. And what she told us uh, made a very strong impression, and that is tourism was going up everywhere, except, of course, in Athens. And she says, you know, whatever you can do to help Athens, you're also going to help Greece. Well, again, being far away, what we thought of doing was finding a way of using new technology. This is the technology that your children use, and their children will be using, that gets to millions and millions of people very rapidly all around the world. And in this technology, um, we can highlight and inspire people to visit Athens virtually, and then when they're in Athens, to have a means to have a guide to see the city very easily. And this is called an app. It is used on an iPhone, and soon it will be used on other devices uh, through an Android system. And by the fall, there will be an iPad and another tablet version making it even easier. What this does is it brings Athens to a potential user in their fingertips, and it gives them another reason to come to the city, because they get to examine the city before they get here, and they have an easy tool while they're here to look at the city. And we have had phenomenal results from doing this, even though it's only been around for about a week. But we are going to the next generation. We are going to the young generation of people, those who are in our classes, and those people who are also going to be visiting Greece and Athens more specifically. To make this app as effective as possible, we thought we would localize it as much as possible. So therefore, it is available in English, but also in Chinese, in German, in Russian, in Italian, in Spanish. This is so that as many people as they can could see this, use it, and we hope they come to Athens. Now, to give you an inside look into what, it, what this thing looks like, I'll pass it over to my colleague, Costa. Thanks, Andre. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna take everybody through a series of slides. Okay, so I'm gonna take everyone through a series of slides. Unfortunately, I can't do a live demo um, but I'll give you a, a pretty good indication of how amazing Athens um, uh, actually looks uh, on an iPhone app. So 
Um, I want to start by saying that um, as Andre and I are speaking, there is a paradigm shift that's taking place um, uh, where uh, mobile communication, mobile applications um, are now uh, uh, taking over, um, uh, where uh, in fact, um, in, and in, in fact, this, in this particular slide, you'll see um, the always connected traveler. A couple of very interesting points that I want to say. Number one, 73% of the Earth's population subscribes to wireless services. It's also undeniable that travelers are, are increasingly using mobile applications to explore, connect, and share experiences. In fact, mobile application or mobile computing is now the most rapidly adopted new technology in computing history, according to many statistics. By 2015, Students uh, will be e uh, using e-textbooks exclusively. By 2016, tablet sales will overtake PC and laptop sales. So Amazing Athens, as Andre said, um, presents an opportunity uh, for the Greek state to extend its cultural brand through the development and distribution of mobile apps. We have a goal of creating a serious, ongoing presence in the mobile space for Greek tourism. This initiative's aim is to create a series of high quality applications that will create a positive buzz about the country. So what does it do for the end user, the tourist? Um, for users of the app, both on the ground um, and or persons considering visiting Greece, the benefits are clear. Comprehensive and official information. In fact, over 130 venues in Athens. Offline maps um, uh, available, as Andre said, uh, in various localized languages. Uh, this means that there's no expensive data plans. Uh, anybody visiting Athens can download the app and use it with no problem without paying uh, their data plan. Um, personalized content in the form of um, uh, localized language, in this case you'll see a Spanish um, uh, uh, localized uh, screen. And of course, personalization. One could easily put in uh, when they're going to Athens, how long are they going to be there, and the app will track this and, and personalize their experience. Um, as Andre mentioned as well, where uh, an iPad app is in the works, uh, thanks to Plant Your Roots in Greece Foundation, the the uh, Theodore Spiropoulos. So we're very happy to have uh, this philanthropist also contributing to um, the Amazing Athens, um, Amazing Athens initiative. So for the Greek state, the Ministry of Tourism, um, again, it's a way to target strategic markets, China, uh, uh, Spain, Brazil, Russia. Um, the other, the other and this is an example of how it's not just translated, it's actually localized to the sensibility of, of user groups. For example, for some users, we, we feature shopping locations. Um, or uh, museums. For others, it's more leisurely activities. Um, uh, might, might be first on the list, uh, beaches, for example. It's also a great way for the state to show the rest of the world that Greece is planning amazing projects um, and that will be available to both Athenians and tourists. What we're doing for the Greek state is we're providing valuable information about who's downloading the app from where, outside of what the GNTO um, tracks. So this is maybe, uh, in some cases, a little bit more dynamic because we know that someone who's searching in the app store uh, for a specific city is very, is very intent on coming to Athens. And so we know, for example, and it's interesting, this, these are just statistics from last week. Uh, most of the downloads came from Asia, again, thanks to localization. What's next? Um, as the minister alluded to briefly in the speech, we're looking to expand our um, Amazing Athens initiative into other areas. Um, what we want to do is create a digital brand uh, for Greek tourism and culture. Uh, we aim to assist Greece in the transformation or reinterpretation of its cultural heritage uh, into engaging applications that clearly send a message to the world that Greece, Greece is the birthplace of civilization. So simply speaking, um, we want to transform this into this. Um, uh, this is something that we're, we're currently um, looking at very carefully now that we've, we've started working on um, more traditional touristic applications. One more app that I want to quickly show um, is the Parthenon app. Uh, and this is uh, an interactive Parthenon, history of the Parthenon app, 
which will be available later this year. We're very proud to announce that it's being designed in collaboration with the famed director Costa Gavras, um, a true philanthropist and patriot. Thank you. As you can see, there's a, a seismic shift going on in the world of communications and that beyond television and newspapers and magazines, the world of technology is informing people at a much rapid rate. Uh, tweeting and Facebook get to people so rapidly that uh, it defies being on television. And I guess the last word in this would be, I would like to thank the New York Post Foundation for having the inspiration and the generosity to use their philanthropy on us so we can bring it back to Greece. Thank you very much. So thank you, everyone. This concludes our first day of meetings, and we hope to see everyone here uh, again tomorrow. We start at 9 a.m. We, we hope you found the, the sessions to be productive and useful, and we, we hope that um, we are building a momentum and that this will continue to be the case tomorrow. Thank you for being here. Minister, thank you for being here.